over time, human populations have tended to grow. Humans found reasons to get together, to establish groups, and with the development of agriculture, made small sedentary communities as more people were born. A few of these communities evolved into what we now refer as cities. A change in labor organization frequently accompanies this type of expansion. Over the last few hundred years, the world's population has increased dramatically, and our economies have gotten more industrialized, resulting in an influx of people into cities. It's when large numbers of people become permanently concentrated in relatively small areas. This process is known as urbanization. Today, I'm Mark, and together with my friends, let us know the local and global issues relating to urbanization, its application on science and technology, and the means of addressing its issues. What's up everyone? This is Ross. With Mark's talk about urbanization, did you know that despite these advantages, urbanization also has its downsides? Let's start with the local issues first. Congested houses in the Philippines, as you can see, are houses that are not apart but are beside each other due to high population. And this can lead to poor housing conditions. Based on statistics, it may also lead to high crime rates in urban cities. Slums in different areas of cities are lacking proper housing that it negatively affects water and sanitation in slums, which may lead to malnutrition and diseases due to insanitation. Thank you, Ross. Moving on, I, Alia, will show you disadvantageous issues that may arise globally, and that is poverty. Since the cost of living in urbanized areas are pretty high, it doesn't suit the level of income that people gain, which is horribly low, especially here in third world countries. That being the case, it increases poverty. Poverty makes society limited to proper education, access to basic services, and their lack of employment participation in being accountable and decision takers. People below the poverty line makes them hard to have the daily necessary needs. Seeing that their necessary needs are not fulfilled, our health may also be at risk. Health issues such as COVID, heart diseases, respiratory diseases, and other communicable diseases can be present. Relating it in times of crisis, this has affected us economically, mentally, and physically. Seeing the disadvantages issues, urbanization also has its own advantages. That will be presented by Ms. Patricia. Thank you very much, Alia. Good day, everyone. This is Patty, and together, let us know more about the application of science principles and technology in urbanization. As the urban population grows continuously, this follows an increase in commodities and waste disposal consumption. With this, many cities around the globe are using tech solutions to implement measures to reduce waste and pollution and optimize energy usage. Examples of such are the use of electric cars and the Internet of Things to optimize the waste distribution regulations process. Each urban setting faces unique obstacles and has distinct technological necessities. In some circumstances, low-cost, easily accessible technologies may be the ideal solution to urban challenges. Intermodal transportation services, for example, can be designed without the need for costly high-tech transportation. Promoting bicycles, a low-cost, healthful, clean, and energy-efficient technology may be the best way to increase mobility in many communities for both young and older people. Moreover, technology also plays a significant part in global food security, aiding in food supply to billions of people. Agriculture has now become substantially mechanized, allowing farmers to grow crops in previously non-arable lands which can possibly offset the loss in crop production areas due to land conversion caused by urbanization. Wow, that's a very good explanation, Ms. Patty. Good day, everyone. I'm Shirley, and I'm also here to show you other applications of science principles and technology in urbanization. Due to the advancement of technology or modernization, some problem arises in urbanization. 
One of these is unemployment. This is brought by mechanization wherein the work that should have been done by people is done by machine, resulting in a loss of employment opportunities for people. Another is technological invention, such as the internet and gadgets, can sadly add to the emission of bad gases and depletion of our resources. Data centers are necessary for internet operations, and a comparable amount of energy is used by these server networks. All know that the majority of energy originates from fossil fuels. Hence, the more energy we use, the greater our emissions. Next. Creating technological devices requires a lot of natural resources. The material used on this originates from the environment. Hence, mining and collecting of minerals are done by manufacturers. All in all, these anthropogenic activities can result in the destruction of habitat and depletion of resources. With the constantly changing world, we are also witnesses to what urbanization we are able to see what and how urbanization affects not just us, but also society and the group. Obviously, we are able to gain new and good things through urbanization. Undeniably, it is somehow an indicator of success. With technological innovations and infrastructure developments, it might be a dream place to live in where everything is easy, fast, and simple. But are we aware of what we are losing as we attain? These societal matters we are constantly being reminded of through apparent effects are results of us making the world a better place. Though unfortunately, as much as we wish to improve our lives in society, our land suffers the consequences. For this reason, it is important that we make ourselves aware of the possible outcomes of our choices and actions guided by several initiatives such as the Laudato Si for a Living with Total Sustainability. All initiatives toward the environment start with awareness of our problems. Through proper education on the issues and impacts posed by urbanization, communities could begin to provide solutions to the problems made by these, at least from within their households and communities forming community engagements and participatory actions. Unquestionably, cities are what makes a country. They are known to be the sources of almost every function and purpose in a society. They are at the center of many countries' technical advancement and economic prosperity. However, also acting as a breeding ground for poverty, inequality, environmental risk, and contagious diseases. In 2019, the United Nations reported that more than half of the world's population, 4.2 billion people, presently lives in cities. In 30 years, with that number, it is expected to rise to 6 billion more. The continuous efforts to provide more jobs, advance technology, and improve lives constantly lower our environmental footprint. That is when enumerated results in various environmental problems such as pollution, deforestation, emission, hazardous and electronic waste, and depletion of resources, we can begin addressing these detrimental issues by raising awareness among the citizens and educating them on what causes these environmental problems to reduce their incidence and repercussion. The government may also play a role by enacting policies urging citizens to take action and programs that significantly benefit the environment. An example of such policies is implementing the use of eco-friendly products in establishments such as paper straws and paper bags or encouraging citizens to purchase reusable items to carry with them instead. By this persistent endeavor towards development, ecological concerns may also come at stake such as energy, water consumption, production, biodiversity, as well as climate change. Increased human activity in cities has resulted in increased greenhouse gas pollution. With the increased use of fossil fuel for transportation and building, large-scale industrial pollution, deforestation, and land use changes, among other things, the urban ecological footprint in both emerging and developed countries is expanding. Although this has become a sickly trend among urban settlements, some cities seem to show that there is hope among these situations. 
European cities, for example, have shown how giving less space for cars and providing wider pedestrian spaces have lessened air pollutants from vehicles and motivated the community to walk more and have a healthier lifestyle. Urban planning also plays a big role in turning cities into resilient and sustainable communities. Barcelona and Spain, known for its grid-style planning, have turned their inner roads into pedestrians, solving traffic congestion and turning the city into a walkable one. In the Philippines, various cities have also done their ways of becoming more sustainable. Pasig City with its Carless Sunday program, Vigan City with its heritage streets turned into full-time pedestrians, and Iloilo City with its bike lanes, river esplanades, and numerous public parks. All these initiatives are known to have decreased carbon footprints, of which we hope to see happen too in other cities worldwide. While some cities in rich countries are declining, many urban centers in developing countries are growing rapidly and uncontrollably. This indicates that housing, basic urban amenities, and consumer items are in high demand. Life in the city also has a negative influence on both rural and urban surroundings. As it degrades, public transportation leads to severe traffic congestion, which contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Aside from that, urbanization also supplies a negative impact on the nutritional health of poor populations, as environmental contamination may also contribute to the malnutrition by being frequently prepared in unsanitary settings. This results in epidemics of foodborne illnesses such as botulism, salmonellosis, and shigellosis. While on the other hand, the rich population also come across with the opposite as they go through overnutrition. Specifically, obesity and other lifestyle conditions contribute to chronic diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and heart diseases. Developing immediate solutions to promote economic and social equity while minimizing not just environmental but overall damage is in fact a challenge. But with the help of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, we, the world, can be the same ones to eradicate all forms of poverty, combat inequity, and combat climate change while guaranteeing that no one is left behind. With total sustainability as the expression of Laudato Si, its indication to care and respond to the cries of the earth, respond to the cries of the unprivileged and the disadvantaged, will be able to know more that the world in fact revolves around us and us will be the solution to solve all the same occurring non-ending problems. And for us to do that, we must take part in both individual and group efforts in promoting for a sustainable development and a greener future by learning more about ecology, not just economically, but as well as spiritually, for us to be able to adapt to a simple yet imperishable lifestyle. From the words of David Suzuki, ultimately we need to recognize that while humans continue to build urban landscapes, we share these spaces with other species. And that is it for today's video, and till we meet again.